Welcome to Photography on the Wild Side. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about your journey as a photographer. Welcome back to Photography on the Wild Side. Today, we're going to be talking about your journey as a photographer and transitioning from just documenting things to actually creating fine art. We are sponsored by Photographer's Adventure Club and Parkwood Studios. And today I have a special guest here, Larry, Larry Pollock from Arizona. And you're a nature photographer as well as a portrait photographer and product photographer. But your nature side really came out recently when you were published. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, well, I fortunately, I, I was tagging my picture as well on Flickr, and I got picked up by National Geographic with a picture of Milky Way. I did about 2.30 in the morning, what I was doing out at those hours, I don't know, but uh, anyways. You were being yeah, an artist. Yeah, exactly, so <laughs> that was it. Yeah, but yeah that, was, that was a nice uh, feather in a cap after a lot, of, a lot of time spent learning to do that. So. Absolutely. Well, that's one of the things that I want to talk about today, because I get approached a lot, and I've recently been doing some engagements uh, and presentations where... I've been asked to talk about you know, the journey and how you get to the place where you are and how you create what you create. And everybody has their own journey and I'm a big fan of, of actually recognizing photography as a journey. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest frustrations, and I think you and others who are watching will yeah. agree with this, is the ego-laden photographers, right? Yeah. The ones that you, know, you bump into in the field or you see the comments on you know, Facebook or Twitter or whatever you use. And people are condescending, right? They, right? You know, they put someone down for not knowing as much as they do. And I've just always been a firm believer in the fact that photography yeah. is a journey. Yeah. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about that today. And I'm glad that you're here with me because, you know, you've had quite the journey as a photographer. We were talking off camera a few minutes ago about some of your early days. And uh, do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Well, then I can put that in a little quick little thing here because when I was a kid, when I started getting into photography, my dad had handed me a Kodak Dual Flex, which basically did one thing. It took a picture. It had 620 roll film. And I started chasing birds around with it and hummingbirds and quail and things. I eventually got a little um, Instamatic with a cube flash. And I left the flash on, of all things. You being a wildlife photographer, <laughs> appreciate you know me going in here and going, pop, you know, the flash <laughs> and the bird just going absolutely nuts. But yeah, I, I, I really adored just getting out and taking pictures of the landscape and, and birds as a kid. So it was really where I began. Yeah, and everybody, I think, no matter what the gear they have, everybody has that beginning, that first point at which they're inspired. You know, for me, I remember that first moment where I took a picture and it was that decisive moment. Mm -hmm. You know, back when I was a kid, I got started when I was about eight. And I remember those moments and I remember trying to get this image. And it was very frustrating. You had, you know, oh, mediocre yeah. gear at best and, you know, you're learning, but that's part of the journey. And I reflect back on that now happily yeah. but this journey you know that we're on as photographers I know I run into quite a few people who get frustrated right you know I've got this camera I've got this gear or I want better gear and don't have it or I try to take this shot and I can't quite get it um, what are some of your thoughts uh, you know I have my own feelings on it but what are your thoughts about those well, folks well gear does make a difference but not everyone can afford you know ten twenty thousand dollars or more of the, high, the finest gear when they start out. I mean, yeah. kudos if you can, but that isn't gonna solve all your problems right mm -hmm. away because you've gotta put the time in. It's like anything that, I guess there's that old thing called the 10,000 hour rule of anything you dare to master something. That's the minimum, I yeah. think. That's five years of full time thing. And how many people can do it five years full time yeah. is usually yeah. a hobby. Yeah. So it, it takes a lot of time and it takes a, a, a desire to keep learning and keep trying things and eventually, things begin to work in your favor, but you, you're, you know, you're gonna get a few good shots, but I guess you, you can't believe your own press at the, <laughs> in the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta be careful about that. So I'm sure you went through that whole same process of thinking you were better than you were at a certain point, and they look back later and go, oh my goodness. I yeah. do, I yeah. do. In fact, I use those photos as workshop fodder now, because yeah. I, you know, I literally will kind of tease about my earlier work and say, okay, I thought this was good and now here's where I'm at and here's yeah. what I've learned and here's how I can help you learn it. I think it. everybody has to go over that hump as they think they're getting good and their friends and family are patting them on the back. And they, I mean, I even published a book to give to the family for Christmas one year of my first year sure. in, in Arizona and I thought that it was really good. Now I go back and go, well, it was interesting to them, but boy, I, I'd almost wish I could recall that. Yes, you know, yes, exactly, exactly. And I think that's evidence of that journey. and. One of the things I, I really want to express to people who are watching this today or getting started in photography, or maybe even those that have been around the block for a while and pretty confident, 
is that everyone that we run into that has a camera can be some type of photographer. You may not be a professional, you might not be making income for it, but you're at some level enjoying this art of photography, even if it's with your cell phone, right? And, and I, I get frustrated when people put themselves down, you know, oh, I'm not good enough, I don't know enough, but worse, when somebody else is putting someone else down. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's just so important to realize this is truly a journey for people. Your goals, the destination, the path, the time you spend on that path, the different paths you might amble around on are really your own choice and, and each point in that path is an important step. It's going to take you a different path than someone else It'll, and you're not going to get there as fast or maybe faster than somebody you don't know. Yeah. I think the most thing is to stay open and learning. Don't. Um, judge you know the people and and you know if someone puts you down don't take it to heart yeah. don't, because a lot of great singers and musicians and artists in the world have been told you're never going to be that and they ended yeah. up being some of the top in the world so exactly and i have found you know for those who know me my background is actually as a psychologist i worked as a psychologist before i worked as a photographer and so this emotional side to photography has always been important to me yeah. and what i have found is many of the photographers who are pretty arrogant about things and will condescend some of the others are actually kind of they have some insecurities of their own sure. they're trying to deal with so i sometimes think about that when you get someone who's you know a little bit over the top with that right. um but as you're on this journey you know we talked about being kids and taking these pictures and you know we probably never look at those original pictures anymore um but in that journey a lot of times I'll get asked, well, how do you create your art? Or, you know, mm. gee, you're good at what you do. Or, you know, I love this image. How do you do that? It, almost as if there's a certain class that you take on yeah. how to create art, right? And yeah. there's some basics, there's fundamentals, but I think the creation of art ends up being each artist's own interpretation and style. But yeah. uh, what are your thoughts on that journey from being a documenter of things to being an artist? Well, I think you have to go through that phase first. You're going to fill up memory cards these days. In the old days, you probably were a little slower with the cost of film, depending on your budget. But uh, the, the memory cards, you know, people can buy them at pretty inexpensive now. And you're going to shoot four, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred images, and you go out f for an afternoon or evening because you're going to be shooting everything. I think it's when you reach that point where it's not important for you to take a picture and you start observing. Mm -hmm and taking that time to be more selective that you're beginning to move into that direction where you're going to make your art yes. and you're not there yet but yes. you begin to make different decisions and you're getting over the documenting stage and going starting to move into how do I do that now as we talked about earlier is you might emulate some of your favorite people. For everybody's always emulating Ansel Adams, yeah, right? You right, know? right. And then lots of famous wildlife photographers, I'm sure, that you've followed over the years and tried to get an image like that mm -hmm. and until you've decided that I want to try it differently. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, and it's it's a process, and you just have to go through it. I don't think you can avoid it. <laughs> exactly, I agree with you completely. And I've noticed in my own journey, and I try to help others think through this process. You're out in the field, right? And everybody <laughs> sees. I, I always say, great blue heron is an example because right. it's my logo. It's <laughs> one of my favorite birds. But I always say, the world doesn't need another picture of a great blue heron standing there. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it's got to be pretty amazing if that's the yeah. case. So, what else is it doing, or how are you doing it differently? How are you framing it differently? How are you expressing? Well, what's the story something? that's being told of the bird and what it's doing in the process? Are you taking a yeah. picture in motion? Yeah. I did attend one of your talks, and I found it very interesting because you did show that process of setting up the camera to take a specific shot because you can't get both the, this one or yeah. that one or that one you have to say i'm going to do this one and you anticipate that moment and you go for that shot exactly. and that's what i did with the milky way things i anticipated the right moment yeah. uh, those those kind of things is when you're making the decisions to begin to create art Exactly, and you have to know the rhythm of things, whether you're doing landscapes in the Milky Way, you had to predict in advance, you said you've used tools and things to help you yeah, predict. iPhone apps, uh, uh, photo pills is one that's quite popular out there yeah. to look up where the stars or various things are gonna be. So, you know, it's, it, it tells you uh, a lot that we didn't have a long time ago, so yeah. Yeah, they're useful now. And the planning is so important. And even though we can't predict where a bird might be or where a bear might be, right. you can get you can get an idea. But you, the more you start observing, the more you start seeing behavior, and then you know one thing typically predicts another thing. And so you can, uh, I always say, you know, wouldn't it be cool if? And then you right. can start to predict that and set your camera and your settings for that. And to be fluent with those settings is part of that journey. I don't think you can be 
free with your mind to create unless well, you really what, know the technical yeah, that's first. why you spend the time on the technical till you become unconscious competent with it you can literally change the setting and you aren't worried about what this tool can do for you know your tools exactly so now you can begin to think in this other process of art and the other thing I always like to say about art is I hate to put rules on art what it is and if someone's yeah. coming down you said that's not right you shouldn't do it that way don't do it that way I begin yeah. to rebel right away. It's like, no, wait a minute. I, I want an open palette because someone, how did everything in the world get created that's new? Right. Someone said, no, I'm going to do it this do other it way. Do it differently. Yes. They created a new tool for it or they used the tool in a different way. So, Someone uh, comments on a picture that I have that definitely breaks a lot of the composition rules, yet people find it really compelling. It's moving. And I always say a photograph should make you go, you know, it, it should yeah. feel something. Great photography doesn't just document, it helps yeah. you feel something. And they ask, what well, breaks all these rules? How does it work? And I said, well, maybe we don't know all the rules yet. You know, yeah. there's a rule that just might not be written that that follows. We just that, don't that's know. That's my benchmark. What does it make someone feel? Yeah. Does it get their attention? I don't care how technically perfect it, it is. If it doesn't get people's attention, it's, yeah. it's not a worthy photo for, you know, that being above the average photo. So Exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. What does it make you feel? I exactly. totally agree. And does it tell a story? Um, we're going to dub in a clip here, but just to give our viewers a little idea of what we're talking about, we're talking about pre-visualization. Mm -hmm. I have a clip that I'll show you of a bird, and there's some reasons behind why it's filmed the way it is. You can see what's going to happen. But what I encourage people to do when they're out in the field, a lot of times they're reactive. They see a bird. I'm using birds as an example because there are things a lot of people photograph. But they see a bird and they go, oh, pretty, and they just shoot. And instead, what we really should be doing much of the time is observing the behavior thinking about what might be able to happen in the future, setting your settings for that, and then also, is this in the, in the bird in the best setting for that type of thing? Mm -hmm. Is the light better somewhere else? Will it maybe move there? And really analyzing that whole environment so that when things happen, you've already got a plan in place for it. I think my last thing I would say about all is, is, is be patient with yourself. Yes. Take the time to learn and practice and, and do the work because you'll be amazed what happens down the road. You, you can't predict what you're going to become in that process. But if, if you have a passion for it, it won't be a, a chore. Exactly. I agree. Keep at it. Don't let the naysayers and the, the ego-laden folks get in your way of doing good work and enjoying your art. It's yeah. a journey. It, it always be, it is a journey. It will become your art eventually. It will. It will. <laughs> Thank you so much, Larry, for joining me. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for today. having me. Thank you.